What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today as we pick up the final book on this side. We increase our literacy, or at least our burglary of literacy related objects. And so there it is, the second book, and you know we're about to get jumped. Your comlink crackles, you've got the books, great. Next you need to head upstairs so I can wipe the security data and then you're home free. Did you know these creatures were here? No, I planned this run down to the last detail, but those monsters were a happy accident. A happy accident? Oh man, who are you, Bob Ross? Not sure how your meticulous planning didn't account for the hordes of basement monsters. It's a tomb. Things are bound to pop up, which in your line of work, you should be prepared to handle. Now, time's a-wasting. Security room's at the top of the stairs leading back to the museum floor. A click in your comlink and he's gone again. He is not one you know we're about to get attacked again. I would find it incredibly unlikely that we just like walk away from this one without further attrition. Mm. Why is there just a big hole in the middle of the floor? It seems like a security hazard. It seems like the kind of thing that your workers could injure themselves on and believe me, I worked on a construction site for a lot of years and if there was a way to hurt themselves, construction workers would figure out a way to do it. You could put giant flashing LED lights that said don't step here or you will break your leg. Inevitably somebody would step on that spot and break their leg within 72 hours. Like, Jesus, man, we put up a sign, we put up little thingies, we put up a cordon around it, and you still stepped on it and broke it. Oh, shit. A cadaverous husk materializes in front of you, unfolding like a flower from nothingness into being. It stands with a surprisingly upright posture, and you can see that its robes were once of quality. It raises a hand to block your path. Stop. The thing's voice comes out in a hollow rasp. Something about it feels empty. It seems you can move freely through this realm, coming and going and taking what is not yours. What are you? I was once a man much as you are, now I am a dead man. My soul is bound to this place and I cannot leave. So you think I can get you out of here somehow? You can. Slowly and painfully the mummy inclines its head, it reaches into the folds of its robes and produces a ring of fired porcelain. The creature extends its arm, presenting the object as an offering. Take this talisman and place it among the other artifacts you have removed. Once you have moved it beyond the binding threshold of this er, excavation, I will be free. Let's say that I do this. What's in it for me? The sure knowledge that you have done what is right. How do I know I can trust you? You don't. How could you? But I am a man of my word. I don't know if transporting the undead outside of their tomb is contained by my contract. I... how do I know that it, he's saying that it's the right thing to do, but like, you're in a tomb, bro, that's where dead people go. Like, oh, look, I'm a file and I'm in a filing cabinet. Let me give you a porcelain ring so I don't have to be a file stuck in a filing cabinet anymore. Like, you're where you're supposed to go. You are in the place for dead people as well as you can be. Eh, let's live on the edge. I do enjoy doing what's right, as do I. When I am free, I will give you a thing, a token. Crumble it in your hands and I will come to your aid, but only once. One time and no more. The mummy's eyeless sockets steam to glare at you and through you. Will you accept my offer? Okay. Thank you. The mummy inclines its head. I will be forever in your debt. It never hurts to have a lich on your side, right? It's probably like dealing with a dragon, though. I'm probably going to get betrayed. Hmm. I don't like being betrayed. I betrayed my dinner last night, but that means I just had to carry it to the cafeteria. I'm just joking. It goes on a tray. Ha 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 ha. Funniness happening. Uh, the security console, that's what it was. Let's go up in here, we'll push some buttons, and we'll see if this will get us the hell on out of here. And I assume the terminal is powered off. This is the one. Flip the switch on the bottom right, then plug in my data chip. The script will doctor the security log so we can sneak you out. It's executing now. There's a pause, and you can hear him clicking his tongue like a metronome. And done. Get out of there. Okay, well I suppose that gets me out of here, but like what about the 10,000 new yen worth of valuables? Do I go through here? Like how come there's so many places that I can't go? Oh shit balls. We got incomings. Okay, I'm gonna need everybody into real and solid cover. Team's a little spread out right now, which is unfortunate, but I'm going to go ahead and put that into drone mode. And we're going to put the drone over... That's not cover right there? Okay, if that's not cover, we'll put him in right here to flank. 
And we'll just hope that they don't decide to engage with me from over there. On this side, with Comrade Dunk. That used to be his basketball name. We will go over to this side. I was going to call him Dunkaroos too, the most wonderful snack ever invented by man, but... It just seems pro- Oh, all the doors are shut. That's not good. I can't even get the 10,000 now if I wanted to. I should have ran the arithmetic on those numbers in between. I thought about doing it before I recorded this episode, running through the calculator and adding it all together and seeing if 10,000 was exactly how many were in there. But the numbers seem off to me. To get the 10,000, you have to set off the alarm. But it seemed like it'd be kind of a pain in the ass. I... You know... I'm gonna go against... I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop myself here. And I'm gonna say to get her into better cover. I think that's our plan for the moment. And then we got El Dutchie, who I think we can put over here. We're gonna pass the Dutchie on the left hand side, maybe. Pass the Dutchie on the left hand side. Actually, Dutchie ain't got a lot of places to go, and I have a sneaking suspicion these dudes are gonna have grenades, so let's just flush them a little bit. And the shotgun will AoE people, so I gotta be careful about that. Let's end the turn. Unless the drone has something going on. He doesn't have Overwatch yet. What does that do? Basic repair protocol. Are you damaged? If you're not damaged, why bother? What does that one do? Can I flush these guys? It looks like we're going to have to take a turn of hits. I don't know what that guy's do. Ow! Getting shot in this game always seems so painful. It always seems upsetting. Like, why have you done this thing where you shoot me in my... Why is that guy so hard to hit, but that guy is, like, easy to hit? Maybe he's got a higher dodge rating? Whatever. I don't ask questions. I just shoot people. They don't seem to like cover either, so... Good luck with those shenanigans. Oh, I don't have a shot from right here? Well, that's a bummer. Flanked. Flanked. Damn, that was a good one right there. That was a good one right there. I need to get Duncan and a cover, though. Hey, Dutchie, you want to go stand next to the drone and maybe, like, shoot some people? How awesome does that sound right now? Blah! Pretty awesome. That's why he did it with such a plumba enthusiasm right there. That's why I like Dutchie. I really don't want to move people around any further without, like, eh, fall back to here, maybe. And then let's give him a high firepower round. Wah! Yeah, there. We haven't gotten a flanking. Can that not crit? Because so far, we haven't gotten a flanking blow on that yet. I'm gonna put him in a cloud of fart gas. Enjoy! Fart gas! Ooh! That did a bunch of damage. That was the stuff right there. And down it. Wow, I need to use that spell more often. That got buffed. I remember that spell from the previous game and it wasn't that good. That spell does damage now. It does work, son. Do work. Alright, well, let's go with the droney boy first. Joni the droney, take your shots. Ooh, that one's got a lot of armor. That's sad. I don't like it when my enemies have armor and are able to resist my gunfire. Ooh, double damage crit right there. Dunkin' Donuts, you want to get yourself a... We're just begging for a grenade right here. That's why I'm not moving him up. If he could put a grenade right there, we're going to have the worst day ever. I don't trust you to actually kill him, and so I'm going to have you fall back a little bit so that we're not such a giant, gaping, gooey AoE target. Looks like El Duce gets a couple shots too. Kablakata! That's my impression of a shotgun. Kablakata chick chick. Kablakata chick chick. Change of plans. A familiar voice pipes up in your communicator. Change of plans. Search those bodies for a key fob. You'll need it to access the side door. What side door? In the lobby. My program didn't work as well as I'd expected. I've been monitoring the exits on my cameras and the HKPF have the front locked down. Since you can't go out the front now, you've got to exit out the side. That key will get you through the last locked side door, which will take you out the east service exit. Well, at least he's a man with a plan, I guess. So is this... Oh, man, we got security guys coming in over there. I mean, the last group really didn't do anything to surprise me. I can only get out through this door. So it doesn't get me through any of the other ones. Balls. All right, well... Oh, uh, we got a sharpshooter. Ow, my ass! I knew I should have started combat first. I was going to start combat and go through, but I was hoping I could get into cover before they fired off on me. We are not looking so swell right now, and that means that he can't be healed either. When you rest, when you res up with a Bamona kit or whatever, it means that, unfortunately, you are no longer in good shape as far as the game is concerned. I'm going to get him into... 
You know, I'm gonna take him out of the room real fast. He's way too damaged for this. And then we'll put that into control mode. Let's get Joni the Droney up inside the room here. We're gonna go for a flank just like we always do with good old Joni. On this side. They've got really, really good cover over here. I'd like to think that we could win this shootout. But I can't really guarantee it. He's in heavy cover. Alright, well there's a hit right there. Cover absorbed a little bit of it. I'm going to try and get her into position over here as well. So we can start dropping gas bombs on these dudes. So if I could skeef her into cover right there. I Basically, he just needs to lay down suppressing fire along with El Duce and get shot at for a little bit while I handle this. El Duce's movement range is absurd. I love this guy. He's the best. He doesn't have any suppression abilities or anything. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do a whole lot right there. First shot is a miss. Second shot is a miss. Looking like a good turn for us. All we took was one damage. Could have gone a lot worse. I'll tell you that much. All right. So on this side... I can get a flank with Duncan right there, but that means he's going to be flanked from there. El Duce should have him flanked right now. Yeah, I was going to say, this should be a bad day for this guy. So there's 11 damage right there. He's hurting. Can you get a gas bomb on him? Do it. There it is. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see right there. Okay, so that's all taken care of. You, sir, why would he give up his position like that? That was a poor move. By any objective standards, that was a bad move on the part. Oh, really? He survived it. Okay. Well, damn, son. I'm going to let you heal up for a minute. I don't want you on the battlefield if you're... I mean, part of the problem is that we caught a flanking shot to the chest. So, that's always going to be an issue. My suggestion with this guy would be to move him... So, the basic way that it works is if you're on a corner, you're really, really easy to flank. I looked it up. And a couple of programmers disassembled the code from the previous games because they didn't like the flanking system. Because they said it was kind of arbitrary and sometimes you got flanked when you were obviously in cover. And essentially the way that it works is whenever you're in cover, you really want to be at least one cover in. If they're on this side of you, you want to be one cover in from the corner. So you should never take cover on a corner unless you're at long range like Duncan is. But if you take cover in a different weird spot, it's going to get you into trouble. I'm going to put him in right here and hopefully he'll take a shot or die from the gas before this gets any worse. Oh, you're already in position? Well, shit, bud. There you go. Get him. Joni the Droney, flush him. Oh, and he's down. Joni the Droney causing problems. The thing is, I can use him as an expendable asset, which is what I very much like about drone rigging in this game. It's like if he dies midway through the mission, it's not that big of a deal so long as we win the fight without any real tangible losses. I, I think he gets nades back at the end of the... I'm pretty sure he gets nades back at the end of the run. Although I am a little bit worried he's going to screw that up. Hmm, it's odd. Why is his accuracy so low? I would really like this sniper to go. Yeah, there it is. That's what I was hoping for. Now that the sniper's down, I'm going to move him in. And he should be in cover right now. I'm going to wait for the gas to go away. And this side will advance him forward. And now that we got the flank, I don't know what the AI is doing right now. It's like the AI is not even trying anymore. Like, he exposed... They both exposed themselves, like, really, really badly during this turn. I'm just going to pump rounds at him. I, I'm in a pretty dominant position right now. There's not a whole lot of things he's going to be able to do to get in my way. I'd say maybe... Oh, there's a ley line right there? Well, shit. I didn't even know that. Move her down to here so that she's got a flanking position, too. And the gas is lingering, unfortunately. Let's go for a shot right there. 50-50 to crit. There it is. I'm going to give him a flame shot, too. Unfortunately, we missed with that one. I'm going to scooch him. And Gobbit, let's play around with Joni the Droney first before we go any further. He's in cover right now. And you know what? Just spray the cover, whatever. There it is. So job done. Job's done. And it's all finished off. It doesn't look like there's anything else in here to jack. So my guess is that you can steal the 5,000 and not set off the alarm. Or judging by the arithmetic, all these things that were in here, you set the alarm off and then you get the 10,000 for the extra karma. That's fine. I'd rather do this stealthily anyways, although the game seems to end on a violent front no matter what I do. Let's go to... Can I go through any of the doors now that I killed off the cops? I mean, if I can go back and loot stuff, who gives a shit? You know, like, oh, it looks like I can't. Okay. 
I don't really like that, but whatever. Not a big deal. It doesn't bother me that much. I'm not gonna, like, weep about it. Let's get up out of here. 5,000 new yen's better than no new yen, so... My assumption is that I'm not gonna get to sell that stuff, though. Or if I do, it's gonna have, like, a broker's cut on it that's gonna totally suck. And you're like, oh, here's 600 new yen. I'm like, oh man. Your adrenaline wanes as you fly through the subway tunnels on your way back to Hioi. There isn't much left to do but pick the shards of glass off your clothes and congratulate yourself on one hell of a run. It's just too bad you couldn't keep the looted antiques, but by the end you managed to steal over 5,000 new yen worth of items for your client, a number that'll hopefully be reflected in your mission pay. The damage you caused will likely set the museum's development back even further, not enough to cripple the project, just enough to send a message. But at the end of the day, you still managed to break a lot of exhibits, displays, and even the faces of a few tomb crawlers, the presence of which had conveniently slipped Drake's mind. Surprises aside, you came out on top, and thanks to some quick thinking on Drake's part, you got the books and you got out. So what happened with the ghosty guy? Like, is he just gonna show up in my boat? Or like, what's going on here with the ghosty man? Hey, eight more karma. Let's spend it right now, because I love karma. Karma is the best. I'm gonna focus on drone combat because I really feel like my drones are like screwing up and not hitting like anything right now. So if we could go like all in on... So we'll increase his damage a little bit, but I need like his accuracy to go up. Wow, you gotta go way deep in for drone accuracy. Okay, well that's fine. We'll go ahead and we'll keep it where it's at for right now. I love Rigger Decker hybrids. I play them all the time when I play Shadow. Like I love the shit out of them. They're the best. Like, they are one of my favorite classes by far. On this side, we gotta continue this going along. It looks like you actually get two choices, so you can take the ones that you like better. Integrated tactical computers mark weak spots in the opponent's armor. It reduces the enemy's armor by one. That's pretty decent, I guess. And steady shot. A pistol ability that increases accuracy by 30, and for one shot, that's not too terrible. Like, one armor is not that big of a deal, so I think I'll take sabotage. On this side, we got to decide if we want territoriality. Destroy spirit. The rat totem invocation does 99 damage to a hostile spirit. The spell can only be used on spirits. That's a We could have used that on the last run when we were busting up the feng shui. God, some of those spirits were gnarly. That would have been amazing back then. Or we can steal control of spirits that have been summoned by enemy shamans. Note that only one spirit can be under control until rank 5 spirit control where it becomes 2. Both of these are good. I like both of these. Although this one I think would be more useful because you could... Eh, well... I don't know. They both are useful in their own way. There's nothing like an oh shit button when somebody summons a spirit on you can take control of it. Territoriality instantly destroys the spirit anyways though. So it kind of comes down to do you want to commandeer it, have it attack its own guys, and then after that you have to deal with the fallout. Or do you just want to destroy it outright and make the mage be like, well, shit, and waste his turn? I don't know which is the right choice here. Both choices are pretty solid. Probably go for territoriality. And you didn't level up? Okay. What happens if I clear these? I was going to say, the clear all button was still lit up and I wasn't quite sure. Let's go get paid today. It's going to be the best in every way. I'm going to love it. I get rhythmic and I get tonal whenever this happens. I love money. Let's get paid. Splatter Cat loves that new yen. Grabbing it right now for him. To the top, to the safe boat. What happened to Ghosty Man, though? I'm a little bit concerned about Ghosty Man. I bet he's going to show up later in some random... Oh, he still he has one. Okay, so we got Mercy Kill. We've got Crowd Control. What ability is Subdue, anyways? I didn't see that. So hold on. What ability is Subdue? He doesn't have an ability called Subdue, so how can we update his ability called Subdue? Hmm. i say that one's probably the better one. That's that's Lethal Force is a pretty good move. 99% chance to hit an enemy with less than 25% HP if they're dug into cover. That move's going to be really, really useful in the future, so I'm going to take it. It tactically seems better than whatever Subdue is, and then we'll get Nail Grenade next time, which we can use to wipe out their armor, which will be really, really good. I think you only get one permission, but knocking off two armor can be pretty devastating if somebody uses armor as their main strategy. Like those mages that we fought that had like five or six armor on each of them, that was their defensive strategy. Like if the armor you got through it, you were done for. Let's go to the jobs directory. Let's go museum payment job. Marked it as finished. There's 1600 right there. 
Well done. I've attached the payment you've owed. I trust that you'll keep quiet about what exactly was liberated from Lou's little museum. I'll come collect the books from Kindly Chang shortly. Okay, so there it is. We didn't get paid a ton, but it's something. And so we've got pending jobs still waiting with the serial killer. Let's go ahead and check our messages real fast. Open. Actually, we need to get our data, too. Let's post the pay data from over here. We've got the, mu the museum shipping manifest, so maybe we'll get paid out for that. Claim the payment on the last thing that we have for the logistical data from Wu Jing. It was only worth 170 but that's fine. A little bit of cash is a little bit of cash. I think... Searching the BBS, we can actually take a look for the world right here. And these are essentially what these are, is they are... Kind of like newsreels, I guess. You can go through them and read them all. It's, it's going to be verbose, though, if I do it. And so I'll probably work through a couple at a time, one episode to the next. Inbox messages. We have Raymond Black's history from Isabel. Duncan asked me to do some digging on my own into Raymond's history, and I guess he doesn't really trust Kindly Chain to give him the full story. I can't say I blame him because she'd hide things from us if it was in her best interest to do so. So I've been poking around various corners of the Matrix trying to dig up what I can. Most sinners have they, most sinners leave a data trail the size of an aircraft carrier in their wake. Working backwards in time, Raymond starts out that way, but it slowly tapers away into nothingness. Sure, I can find some basic records at Seattle Power, Utilities, a couple of public discussion sites he signed up for, but the further back I get, the less I find. The craziest part is this, prior to 2032, I can't find anything at all, and that shouldn't be possible. It's like Raymond didn't exist before then. I don't know. I'm going to keep on digging, but it'll take me a while. I'll let you know when I get some news worth sharing. Okay, so we've got a restaurant job. From Kindly Chang to Splattercat. One of the things I've learned over the years is that even the rich and powerful have annoyances, thorns in their side, if you will. No one is without troubles, the rich just have different ways of solving them. The client for this run has grown tired of one particular thorn in his side. Chung Sing Rooster Lo. Lo is a red pole from one of the smaller triads here in Hong Kong, the 289s, or the Easy Money Gang, if you prefer. Despite the 289's small stature, Lo's illegal activities have managed to damage the client's profits. Mr. Johnson would like you to help him show Lo the error of his ways, so we're laying low low. Sounds good to me. I love a Lolo. Let's do this thing. Lo takes an evening every few months to dine at the Shangri-La restaurant in Aberdeen. If you aren't aware, the Shangri-La is an elite establishment serving primarily corporate clientele from Wu Jing Incorporated. Because of this, it's not unusual for diners to bring bodyguards or assistants with them. In Lo's case, he brings a particularly brutish enforcer known as the Talon and undoubtedly feels well protected. You're going to prove how wrong he is in this regard. You are to kidnap Rooster Lo. So long as he is alive and in relatively good health, all options are on the table. While keeping the run quiet would make things easier for Mr. Johnson, no one will shed too many tears over a few dead triad thugs. The client has arranged an exit via boat. So long as you can get Lo from the interior to the restaurant's dock, the client will handle everything else. Apparently, he's in need of medicking. Despite the red pole, Lo is a tactician, not a fighter. Don't expect him to put up much of a fight. The talent, on the other hand, is as nasty as they come. Be careful about how you confront him or things may go very, very badly. The Talon. The little tiny dented claw, more like the Talon. The D-Claw. This dude's about to get laid out. He's about to find... I got guns. Ain't no use against a Talon. What you need a Talon for? Machine guns. Bada 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 bada. And they all die. They all die. Take the run. I've let the client know you've accepted the job. By the time you arrive at the Shangri-La, the boat will get you out. To get you out, we'll be waiting. Urgent task. Little birds have been whispering in my ear about an urgent, high-paying run. Steel Arm Lou, a red pole, has managed to get his hands on information concerning a prototype laser weapon in development by Ares Asia Holdings. For years, the Yellow Lotus and the Red Dragon have been locked in a Cold War. Despite this, we remain evenly matched. Neither one of us can attack the other without being exposed to devastating reprisals. Lou wants to change this, and he has a plan. Rather than strike directly, Lou intends to aim external forces at the Red Dragon, specifically Knight Errant. He intends to frame a white paper fan named Golden Fong, making it appear that the Red Dragon had been bribing Ares researchers for classified data. Two leading drone and energy weapons researchers have recently transferred from London to Hong Kong and are running the project. Doctors Taylor and Hardingham were respected in Europe, but in Hong Kong they remain unknown or they remain unknown quantities, but tr untrusted and therefore are considered untrustworthy. Perfect targets, in other words. We will provide data that will make it look as if the researchers were contacted by Golden Fong and have made quite a bit of money, but grew tired of the arrangement. Anyways, a red pole is an enforcer. A white fan, I've never heard that before. A white paper fan, I've never heard that before, so I have no idea. I assume it's somewhere lined up with either... It's got to be higher ranking than a red pole, which means that it's probably like a capo or something. Not really sure. 
Transfer the attached files to a data chip. The files are bundled with Worm Program, which will e auto-execute when inserted into the appropriate systems. You need not bring a Decker, though one may be helpful. You will need to plant data in the visitor record system, the camera systems in Harding, Hammond, Taylor's lab. Financial data is to be transferred to Dr. Taylor's personal terminal. That in and of itself will not be enough to ensure knight errant involvement, however. Planting the data is only the first part of your task. This is where a heavier touch will be required. You will also need to steal the prototype laser weapon. There's a GPS tracking device attached to it which Lou will plant deep in Red Dragon territory. The apparent theft of a prototype weapon by a disgruntled triad member should convince Ares to dispatch overwhelming force against the Red Dragon, dealing them a vicious blow. As a note, Lou does not care what becomes of the laser weapon. If you wish to sell it or keep it, feel free. I've also attached a map of your extraction route from the building. During the facility's expansion in 2052, Ares Asia was forced to extend their foundations deeper into the island. They drove piles through the former site of the central MTR station, which partially collapsed during the Dalu Bay earthquake of 2044. Practically, what this means is that you can exit through the basement directly onto the new MTR line through the central. With any luck, you can be gone without anybody knowing how. Unfortunately, this route is heavily alarmed, so you will be forced to go in the front door. If you can con the front desk, you should have no problems. The facility is both an office and a residence, so strange people coming and going at odd hours would not be unusual. If you're not up to fast talk, however, be prepared to shoot your way in. Lou doesn't really care if you're loud or quiet, but a word of caution, he came by all this information via the loose lips of one of the research team. Other fixers know about this job. Move fast, and you are guaranteed success, but there are definitely other Shadowrunners with an eye on your prize. Ooh, that's something they've never done in the game before. I took the job very well. Steel Arm Lou sends his regards and bids you good fortune and plentiful ammunition. The dramatic git. Don't die, Splattercat. Our arrangement has been very profitable so far, and I would hate to lose that. Okay, so that's probably going to be the next mission that I do. Although, if it puts us up against other Shadowrunners, that's intense. That's something that frequently happens. Frequently happens in normal tabletop games because jobs are typically known about by a bunch of different Fixers and Johnsons. So it kind of depends. If you know a Fixer or a Johnson, that's who you get jobs from. Typically from a Johnson. They're called Mr. Johnson so they can maintain anonymity. So it doesn't really matter what your real name is. If you give away Shadow Runs, your name is Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Unless you get to know him really, really, really well. And then at that point, I suppose you would know him on a first name basis. But even that's kind of rare. It's a bad... It's bad business. So anyways, fixers do all the same thing, although fixers are a little bit more powerful than Johnson's. Fixers tend to, like, provide you with just about anything you could need, including jobs, guns, weaponry, whatever. Going up against other Shadowrunners happens pretty frequently in tabletop, though, because the jobs are pretty common knowledge to a bunch of different fixers. You could end up there fighting Knight Errant, Ares, and a whole bunch of other people, too. If you don't know, Ares is a weapon manufacturing company that's been around since, like, the dawn. Like, they're one of the oldest companies in Shadowrun lore. They've been around for a long-ass time, and they're definitely not to be messed with. Ares, Renraku, I think Mitsuhama went out of business at this point in the storyline. I think Mitsuhama's gone. There's Ares, Fuchi, Mitsuhama. Fuchi, I think, I think they went out of business, too. No, Fuchi still makes decks. We saw it over here. So Mitsuhama, anyways, I think got destroyed or taken out of business. But the guys you want to watch out for in this game are as technology. You want to watch out for Renraku and generally Ares. Those are the big three that will, like, ruin your life if you mess with them. With a big, big focus on Renraku. Renraku is just a big, evil, mega Japanese corporation that will wreck everybody on the planet if they feel like it. Renraku is super hardcore. My name is Blattercat. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. I will see you all later, chummers. Hi-do. Purchase the game down below in the description if you so desire.